Have you ever wondered why so many major retail chains have filed for bankruptcy or closed locations recently? I mean, we're talking Toys R Us, Baskin Robbins, J. Crew, Hertz, 24 Hour Fitness, even Dunkin' Donuts. It's pretty much an entire mall. Well, it's not just because of the pandemic. See, there's a shadowy mafia that has been ripping off the entire US economy while making themselves rich, filthy rich. This group is responsible for bankrupting hospitals, your favorite retail chains, and even ripping off Taylor Swift. They're called private equity, and your company might be next. Let's take a deep dive into the private equity mafia. I'm Adam Conover, and this is The Classroom from More Perfect Union. So what does private equity mean? Well, if you wanna be literal about it, it's just investing in any asset other than the public stock market. A private equity firm like Blackstone, KKR, Carlyle, or Apollo manages a private equity fund, which is a big pool of money from investors who are trusting the firm to make good choices with that money. But we wanna focus on one nefarious strategy the private equity mafia use specifically. Let's take a look at the real mafia to explain. In mob media like Goodfellas and The Sopranos, the mafia preys on profitable small businesses, puts them into debt by making them pay money to keep the place running, and then leverages that debt to do whatever they want with the place. They run up huge tabs, take store merchandise on credit, eat all the maraschino cherries, the works. Then, when the owners can't pay them anymore, they just burn the joint down for the insurance money. Now in the mafia world, this is called a bust out, and it's obviously criminal. But in private equity, it's called a leverage buyout. Leverage buyout. Leverage buyout. Leverage buyout. The classic LBO. And it's completely legal. You can't just give a crime a businessy name and call it legal. I can't legally commit murder if I call it a lifespan termination agreement. No, no, sir, I'm not stabbing you. This is just a knife to chest merger. The JP Morgans, they were crooks and killers too, but that was a business, right? The American way. Leverage in a business context just means borrowed money, debt used to buy an asset. So in a leveraged buyout, a private equity firm is buying a company using a giant loan, much like how you might take out a mortgage or student loan. But unlike those loans where you, the buyer, are responsible for paying it and all the interest back in a leveraged buyout, the company being purchased is responsible for the loan, not the private equity firm. <laughs> These companies get saddled with up to 90% of their value in debt, while the private equity firm stands to lose nothing but the 10% they put in. Now, Private equity firms like to claim that they're coming in and saving small businesses. We really wake up every day trying to build businesses. That is the goal of private equity. But in reality, they're mostly targeting businesses that are already doing fine. And this isn't some fringe strategy. It's happening all the time. In just 2021 alone, there were around 8,500 leveraged buyouts in the United States, valued at $1.2 trillion. Now, you might ask, Pumping thousands of companies full of debt. How is this a money-making strategy? Well, to private equity billionaires, the companies they buy are just theoretical assets, numbers in a ledger, potential profit sources. But you know, in reality, they're real organizations with thousands of employees, the people who actually do the work and are relying on that income. Private equity controls a ridiculous amount of the workforce now, and it is growing from fewer than 9 million workers in 2018 to almost 12 million in 2020. So let's look at how leveraged buyouts affect the workers at the companies acquired by a private equity firm. Their new bosses, the PE firm, are concerned with paying off the debt and increasing profits and little else. So what do they do? Well, first, layoffs. When private equity takes over a large company, 13% of jobs on average are cut. From 2009 to 2019, private equity killed 1.3 million retail jobs, and that's just one industry. And they can also just make your job worse even if they don't lay you off. Employees at private equity-owned companies pay more out of pocket for health insurance, get less employer retirement contribution, and get fewer raises, all in the name of cutting costs to pay back debt. Now, more Perfect Union covered this, showing what happened to working conditions at the Cheesecake Factory when it was snapped up by Rourke Capital. A firm, this is true, named after a character in an Ayn Rand novel. 
interesting fact, Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead, where the name Rourke comes from, is 753 pages long, and that is 80 pages shorter than a Cheesecake Factory menu. And even with all these cuts to the basic rights of workers, private equity still manages to run companies into the ground. About 20% of public companies taken private by private equity go bankrupt in their first 10 years, compared to just 2% otherwise. Like in the case of a company that was very dear to me and any kid who grew up in the 90s, Toys R Us. The company was bought in 2005 by a coalition of private equity and real estate firms, and the toy chain was immediately burdened with over $3 billion in debt. By 2007, just two years of private equity ownership, Toys R Us was spending 97% of their profits on paying back interest, and not even the full loan. That prevented them from being able to innovate. You know, that thing that capitalists are supposed to love doing? So, Toys R Us missed out on that whole internet thing. You know, kind of a big deal. But was that managerial failure or because they couldn't afford to do it, thanks to all those burdensome loans? And you know what? It's not just Toys R Us. Two thirds of companies that filed for bankruptcy in 2016 and 2017 were private equity owned. If a company you worked for went bankrupt, well, there's a good chance it was private equity's fault. Okay, so let's recap where we've been so far. Private equity is destroying jobs and making workers' lives worse. But cost cutting also affects consumers in some pretty serious ways. Private equity investments in nursing homes went up $95 billion from 2000 to 2018, and now 10% of all US nursing homes are owned by private equity. These firms cut staffing and nurse hours so the residents get less basic and emergency care. Residents in private equity-owned nursing homes are 50% more likely to be on antipsychotic medication and 10% more likely to die. One study found that private equity ownership of nursing homes is responsible for a thousand deaths a year. Private equity investments in general health care more than tripled since 2015. Now 25% of hospitals are owned by private equity. The Journal of the American Medical Association found that private equity owned hospitals had a $407 increase in charges per inpatient day. And yeah, that's a cost that's being passed on to the patients like you and me. And if human suffering isn't enough to get you mad, well, how about this? After BC Partners acquired PetSmart in 2015, dog deaths at PetSmart groomings doubled. Yeah, dead puppies don't do it for you. Well, how about hugely popular singer-songwriters? In 2020, the private equity firm Shamrock Holdings bought the rights to all of Taylor Swift's master recordings, album art, and music videos, leaving Swift with no ownership of the material she created. Oh, you know Taylor Swift called them out on Twitter. So, benefits are being cut, jobs are being destroyed, the quality of products and services is going down, and companies are folding. And it's all in the name of making good returns for investors, right? Well, that's important. The actual investors in these funds aren't billionaires. They're people who actually matter. Private equity investors are largely retirement and pension funds. You know, those big pools of money that public and union workers, like teachers and nurses, contribute to throughout their careers, hoping to have a retirement income. So for all the human and puppy suffering the private equity model causes, is it at least making those folks some money for retirement? Well, let's listen to Jeffrey Hook, a finance professor at the John Hopkins Carey School of Business, who worked for the finance industry for decades. The marketing pitch is that these private equity investors are geniuses and they're beating the public markets by leaps and bounds. When you dig a little deeper, when you lift up the rocks, you find out that these kinds of claims are untrue. They're flat with the public markets, and in case, some cases underperform. Huh. So if the money isn't going back to the investors, where is it going? Perhaps it has something to do with why some call this industry the billionaire factory. In 2005, there were just three private equity multi-billionaires, but by 2020, there were 22 of them, and they are now worth a combined $153 billion, money that was directly transferred from the retirement savings of teachers and nurses. So let's talk about how private equity is not only destroying businesses, but is transferring wealth from the retirements of the people who need it to a small group of private equity executives via exorbitant fees. The amount of money put into private equity is gigantic, probably a couple of trillion dollars easy. And 
Estimates vary, but I would say probably a little more than half would be in public plans or municipal plans. Hook says that private equity firms aren't providing the returns they promise. And Hook isn't alone. Oxford researcher Ludovic Falapu found that once you factor in the massive fees private equity funds charge their investors, the funds perform no better than simply investing in the stock market. Research by the American Federation of Teachers, run by President Randy Weingarten, found that the average private equity fund used to perform similar to the public stock market, but since the mid-2000s has actually underperformed the public market. Even Warren Buffett, the ultimate Wall Street insider himself, agrees. We have seen a number of proposals from private equity funds where the returns are really not calculated in a, in a manner that, uh, well, I, they're not calculated in a manner that I would regard as honest. If I were running a pension fund, I would be very careful about what was being uh, offered to me. And you know what? It's even worse than that. We mentioned fees a few times, but the fees really, really add up. PE firms use a fee structure called two and 20. They get 2% of all money invested with them and then 20% of all profits above a certain amount. The fee drain from these various investors is probably on the order of $30 billion a year. So they're paying $30 billion a year for investment performance that is mediocre at best. If you look at the New Jersey State Employees Fund, 14% of the portfolio has been sucked out in fees the last five years. Since 2006, a total of $230 billion has been transferred from investors to private equity firms through performance fees. Now, pension funds could instead simply not pay those fees, invest in the stock market normally, and make the same returns. That'd be more money for retirees. The firms also make money with monitoring fees. The fee that's kind of hidden is called a monitoring fee, and that is the fee for giving them advice and sitting on the board of directors. That's right. They buy the company, forcibly hire themselves as consultants and directors, and then pay themselves for it. It's all part of their win-win for themselves system, and they collect a little bit of money every step of the way. Now the winners here are obvious, like a mob-run casino or any casino, the house always wins. All that money is rolling in. What's a terrific deal for the private equity managers, they put up very little money, they get a huge amount of fixed fees. In the process, we've created a new plutocracy. So, how do teachers feel about the fact that billions of dollars of their retirement savings are being used to fund private equity strategies? This is Randy Weingarten. She's the president of America's second largest teachers union, the American Federation of Teachers. I don't begrudge anybody from making money. I don't begrudge anyone from having their American dream. But give me a break. It's the workers of the country that have built this country. It's the teachers who have built this country. It's the nurses and the healthcare workers who have saved people from COVID. Why would they be undermined, their conditions be undermined? Why would their pensions be stolen? And they do it with no transparency and they do it in ways where they overpromise and underdeliver. This whole thing just seems completely predatory, backwards, unjust, and frankly, not conducive to a productive and equal economy. So how are they getting away with any of this? I mean, last time I stole from a retiree, I had to give all those Werther's Originals back. Well, it's because they're allowed to hide essential information like returns. See, this entire industry exists in the shadows, like the mafia. They report their own returns to investors and they never have to be completely open about how much they're making. Those massive fees we told you about, not only are they allowed to hide them, but in 38 states, it's illegal to reveal them. That's because again, like the mafia, they've got guys on the inside everywhere. Over the years, the industry has developed with the help of many enablers, what I call a protective ecosystem. The private equity industry is essentially operating unfettered by federal government regulation. I mean, you have thousands of private equity funds. You might have a couple of dozen people out of thousands of SEC employees that cover the private equity industry. The SEC's offered no explanation for why it lets this gigantic industry run around essentially unsupervised. 
Part of the problem is that many government officials have come from private equity, and many of them go to private equity when they leave government. Senator, we're both part of the same hypocrisy. Towards the end of President Trump's reign, his Department of Labor announced a rule change that would allow private equity to get into 401ks. You know, that thing your retirement savings is likely invested in. One expert estimated that that would help transfer almost $14 billion in wealth from individual retirement investors to private equity firm managers. Now, the Biden campaign denounced this at the time, but in 2021, with Biden as president, his administration ended up reinforcing the action with a supplemental letter. And Biden's presidential campaign received nearly $4 million in donations from private equity executives. But even if you don't work for a firm sucked up by private equity, even if your pension isn't in it, even if you never go to a private equity owned hospital, this is still your problem. So. What can we do to fix it? Well, transparency for one. Enter the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, the federal agency charged with stopping bad actors from manipulating the markets. The SEC, led by Biden appointee Gary Gensler. Private equity funds, you might think they don't matter to everyday investors and companies, or do they? <laughs> has proposed changing their rules so that private equity firms would have to, you know, tell the truth about the returns of their funds and disclose transparent information about all the fees that they charge. Now, obviously, the lobbying groups representing private equity firms are up in arms about the idea that they might have to disclose even some of the basic information to their investors. But meanwhile, in Congress, the federal Stop Wall Street Looting Act introduced in 2021 would limit the amount of debt used in buyouts, increase transparency, and close tax loopholes. Polls. If we don't make those changes, the private equity mafia is going to keep getting away with their schemes to line their pockets with your money, your teacher's money, your nurse's money, all while killing your puppy and your grandma and making you wait an extra 40 minutes for an almond crusted salmon salad from the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, it's infuriating, right? Why is it that private equity has more of a priority than the people who work for a living who make America run. Yeah, I'm really angry by that. This is not fair to workers. The people who do the work should have the kind of livelihood that they can have their American dream. Thank you for joining us in The Classroom, a series by More Perfect Union. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our previous videos.